Steve in Pflugerville, Texas. Hey, Steve, what's up? Hey, Tom. I have been checking something out that I found very disturbing, and it has to do with derivatives. And I would uh, recommend that anybody that listens to your show just Google the total value of the world derivative markets. Right. And what will come up is that it's supposedly $1.2 quadrillion. Yeah. So when I hear all these politicians throwing around that the problem in the country is immigration and stuff like that, how come no one is addressing that it's totally unregulated, nobody knows what it is, and it has a value that's more than the economies of the whole world yeah. and i'll hang up because i'd love to hear what you have to say about it because i don't really understand derivatives other than something has to happen for something else to happen and so nobody can sort the whole mess out right okay let me let me quickly steve thank you for the call i'll quickly explain them uh derivatives are called derivatives because they derive their existence and value from some underlying uh typically in equity, some under or, or, or debt, some underlying thing, right? Uh, for example, in the, the period, derivatives were essentially legalized in 1999, 19, uh, 1999 and 2000, in the last years of the Clinton administration, heavy, heavy lobbying by Republicans in the Senate and the House and by banksters. Um, this was Graham Leach Bliley, which blew up Glass-Steagall and the Commodity Futures Modernization Act. Between the two of them, both the brainchilds of Phil Graham, whose wife Wendy was on the board of Enron, this was done for Ken Lay of Enron. Most people have even forgot what Enron was. Right? Enron went down, I think it was in 2002. It was a couple of years into the Bush administration. But but anyhow, the uh, this was done for Enron. And, and, what, and what it did is it allowed... Uh, basically bet makers, only they're called bankers, to place bets on something that has value. So, so they would take um, $100 million worth of mortgages, throw them into one giant pot, and then slice that pot into 100 $1 million slices. Then they would buy mortgage insurance. They bought this through AIG. They would buy mortgage insurance to the tune of a million dollars for each one of those tranches. So now each one of these slices, these tranches, these million dollars, these 100 $1 million slices, each one of those 100 $1 million slices is now got $2 million involved with it. There's the original slice and there's the bet that it'll, that it'll pay off. So it's now $2 million. And so then somebody would say, okay, I will bet 10 to 1 that that, 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 that that won't pay off or that it will pay off either one. You can do it either way. So I'm going to, I'm going to write an insurance policy on the insurance policy. So now a million dollar mortgage has become $2 million worth of, you know, stuff you can churn money. You can churn. And now it has become $20 million worth of stuff you can churn. So somebody else says, well, I'll make a 10 to one bet on that. Now it's $200 million worth. Somebody else says, well, I'll make a 10 to one bet on it. Now it's two. billion. $2.2 billion worth. Somebody else says, well, I'll do a 10 to 1 bet on it. It's now $20 billion worth. Now, keep in mind, this all started with the million dollars of the mortgages. And it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger because everybody's making a, a order of magnitude bet on the previous bet. And each one of these bets are called derivatives. And as we were going through 2007, the Bank of International Settlements said that the worldwide value of derivatives based on real estate was in the neighborhood of five to seven hundred trillion dollars. Now, keep in mind the gross domestic product of the United States, all combined economic activity in this country, from from the government to McDonald's, all of it together, is in the neighborhood of fifteen to seventeen trillion dollars a year, depending on which you're looking at over the last couple of years. But let's say fifteen trillion dollars a year. That's the United States. The gross domestic product of the entire planet is $65 trillion a year. And yet in 2007, just the banks in the United States and some of their buddies in Germany and England, Deutsche Bank and, and, uh, some of, and actually there was a couple of Swiss banks involved in this too, were sitting at over $600 trillion worth of derivatives. Now there's not $600 trillion worth of value on the planet that, that is liquid. As I said, the GDP of the whole planet is $65 trillion. The six hundred trillion was not showing up on the books of on the banks on the books of banks, and yet the banks were taking this as a liability. And it was the derivatives that froze up 
in 2008 when suddenly these mortgages started going bad because the bets were not, you know, they couldn't pay off the bets. And that's why AIG was going down the tubes. And that's why we gave billions, trillions of dollars, well, hundreds of billions of dollars to Goldman Sachs to give to AIG, to bail AIG out. And we let Lehman Brothers, John Kasich was working for them at the time, we let Lehman Brothers go bankrupt. Now they're no, you know, they're still creating uh, derivatives on mortgages, but now they've added two new areas, and these look like there's hundreds of trillions of dollars based on the U.S. market in these loans. The first is student debt. This is why student debt is over 1.2 trillion, 1.4 trillion now, and it's why it's it's growing so rapidly because every bankster in America wants to sell student debt because they they, they might make a ten thousand dollar profit on your student loan, but they'll make a fifty thousand dollar profit turning it into a derivative and selling it thirty five or forty times. So derivatives based on student loans and derivatives based on car loans, particularly used car loans, oddly enough have become the new markets and it's just it's a bubble waiting to burst i you know you can read all about this in my book crash of 2016 it's it's laid out this bubble will burst it will burst in the next couple of years if not this year i increasingly i think it's unlikely this year um my original bet when i wrote crash of 2016 two years ago was that it would happen either just before or just after november of next year in other words the obama administration will either be able to hold off the the wall of, of water that's going to wash over us, the, the wave of derivatives that's going to wipe out the world, that he'd be able to hold that off until the election or not. George, George W. Bush thought he could hold it off until the election in 2008. He did everything he could to keep that thing from, from bursting, and it burst anyway in, in uh, early 2008, which handed the White House to the opposition party. And there are some who suggest that the Republicans, you know, with their talk about shutting down the government and whatnot, see if they can produce any kind of interest rate shock or downgrade of the, of the value of investments in the United States, if they can do that by shutting down the government or any of these other things that, they, they, you know, that they've done in the past, it will rattle, it, it could raise interest rates, federal interest rates, and raising interest rates, because so many of these derivatives are based on basically loans. These are bets that are placed with borrowed money in, in most cases. Interest rates go up, suddenly the price of all the derivatives has to adjust and the derivatives market might collapse. Because again, it's a house of cards. It's just a house of cards. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the watch more videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.